Now I wonder, what does happen in higher dimensions? There are tangent spaces to things that are like surfaces in higher dimensional spaces, but these surface-like spaces quickly get to deeper mathematics. These are called differentiable manifolds, and they are so cool, so amazing. I love this stuff, but we're not going to go there because that's really some more advanced material. We might see a little bit in volume four, but not now. Now is bonus time. That material about tangent spaces in higher dimensions does require a little bit more linear algebra terminology. So let's go over that. Here's a definition. The image of a matrix A is the set, or rather subspace, of all vectors of the form A times X for all possible input vectors X. Okay, so um, anything that you get as an output, that's the image. The kernel of a matrix is the subspace of all vectors X such that A times X equals zero. It's the set of all inputs that goes to zero. Okay, so the image is a subspace in the range of A, and the kernel is a subspace in the domain of A. Now, don't worry if this doesn't make sense. You're going to learn all this stuff when you take linear algebra for real. But for now, let's see how these two terms tell us something about tangent spaces in higher dimensions. In the implicit setting, where you have a function f from Rn to Rm with more inputs than outputs, then consider the level set f inverse of 0, the set of all x's such that f sends them to 0, something like a nonlinear kernel. Okay, but it's just a level set. It's some weird surface-like space. The derivative of f gives you a system of equations to solve for the tangent space. The tangent space at x0 is given by the equation derivative of f evaluated at x0 times the vector x minus x0 equals 0. Hey, that looks kind of familiar. That is precisely the point-slope formula for a line in the plane or for a plane in three-dimensional space. This is the exact same equation we've been working with in the implicit setting. It works in arbitrary dimensions. And for this level set, for something like the kernel of a nonlinear f, the tangent space is the linearized version. It's precisely the kernel of the derivative matrix. That's very satisfying, that's very nice, especially once you've learned some more linear algebra. Likewise, in the parametrized setting, let's say you have a parametrized space manifold, something nice, defined by f, where now you have t parameters, t1 up through tk, and n outputs, x1 up through xn. Then, in this case too, the derivative gives you a parameterization of the tangent space by using the columns as a basis. So if we set up local coordinates, u coordinates, on our tangent space, then the tangent space is parametrized using the equation u equals the derivative of f times s, where now we have s as our parameters, s1 up through sk. We have k parameters. We take that derivative matrix, evaluate it at t naught. The columns of that matrix are the basis tangent vectors. So again, for the image of this nonlinear function f, the tangent space is the linearized image. It's really the image of the matrix df evaluated at the particular point. This is a very nice way to think about what tangent spaces are like in higher dimensions, either in the implicit or the parametrized setting. You just need a little more linear algebra.